Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Yo Yo Man with Barnsley. In today's episode we are going to be playing through the January transfer window. It's unlikely that a lot is going to happen due to our restricted transfer budget and wage budget. But we're also coming with two live comms as well. We've got Liverpool in the League Cup semi-final in this episode. So we've already beat Man United, we've beat Manchester City. Can we take down Liverpool? Probably not based on this scoreline. <laughs> Our first defeat of the season came straight after the victory against Manchester United. Preston were the team who beat us 2-1. They took the lead in the 88th minute, so I thought we were beat then. We equalised in the 90th through Corley Woodrow, and then Patrick Bauer got a 93rd minute goal to absolutely crush our hopes and dreams and end our unbeaten streak. We bounced back though with an away victory against a good West Brom side. Spastiano Esposito with two, Malik Wilkes with two. And a great performance after that Preston defeat. Wigan were up next this time at home. Esposito and Tisserand with the goals in this one. Giving us the 2-0 uh, victory and the 3 points. We then had a home tie against Cardiff which we won 3-0. Bruno Costa, Bissoli and Esposito with the goals. And finally this was just played on the 2nd of January which is the day we return. Was a 2-2 away draw against Crystal Palace in the FA Cup 3rd round. Luca Milo Vigilera. Got two goals for Crystal Palace, put them 2-0 up, but Esposito and Batella equalised in the second half and would take them to a replay. So the championship table is super, super tasty. We are 14 points clear, having played the same number of games as everybody in the league and ugh, we are just absolutely cruising. If, if we fail to go up automatically with a 20-point gap from West Brom in third, I'll, ugh, the season's finished. The series is over. <laughs> I can't imagine it happening though. I think we're going to go up automatically this season. So that that would be absolutely fantastic. Exactly what we want. Getting into the Premier League with Barnsley and seeing what we can do with one season. But today's episode, we've got plenty of games to go through. It's going to be a long one. We've got obviously the two legs against Liverpool, which we will be seeing. And then a whole host of games in the league as well. And we the FA Cup third round replay against Crystal Palace. So our boys have got a lot of work to do in January. In terms of our transfer budget as well. Only got 625k and 10k available in the wages, so it's highly unlikely I'm going to make any signings in the January unless somebody comes in for one of these boys. Uh, Jordan Williams, our right back, is currently wanted by Cardiff, value of five and a half million. If they give me 10 million pounds, he's gone. <laughs> so that could be a way we free up some funds, but I can't really see it. Let's move on. I will just bring you the recap of all of these games, but first up is Liverpool in a live comp. So, we're at the first leg against Liverpool. We are lining up Blackman and goal, uh, Williams, Batella, Halmier and Herrero at the back, Foster Kasky in defensive midfield and Alex Moat in the centre. Arjen van der Heerde comes in on that right-hand side as he continues his um, journey to full fitness. Gonzalo Ramos, Bruno Costa and Esposito leading the line. Basoli is uh, suspended for today's game, so he's not starting in defensive midfield. And I think Tizaran's uh, injured as well, so he won't be starting either. Or is he suspended? And the other, uh, whatever. They're unavailable for today's game. That's why they're not starting. In probably the biggest game of our season, Liverpool, it uh, looks like they've made some good signings. Ruben Diaz in the centre-back role. We signed him for Arsenal not so long ago ourselves. And he is an absolutely world-class centre-back. No doubt about that. And they've also signed Milik up top, which is a little bit interesting. Not the kind of signing I expect to see from Liverpool. But he's still a good player and far better than anything we've got. So we've got two legs, League Cup semi-final. We've beat two of the best sides in the Premier League already. Can we do it again? We have went on counter straight from the off, so we'll see how our boys do. In an unfamiliar team mentality, it's not often we actually play on a cautious team mentality. First highlight of the game, though, it looks like it's going to be an attack for us. Tony Herrero picks up the ball on the left-hand side. He gets the ball in. Van der Heer is there. And Ian, Ian Van der Heer there with his fourth goal of the season on his return from injury after breaking his leg or whatever he'd done. Um, we take a 1-0 lead against Liverpool, two minutes in. I mean, it's a little bit unbelievable. Um, Tony Herrera with a good cross to the back post. Van der Heerde with a goal. Um, uh, we've got 88 minutes. 88 minutes to hang on. 15 minutes gone. It's Liverpool on the attack this time with Sadio Mane. Milik's in the box and he heads over the bar. I wasn't even worried. Imagine, just imagine beating Liverpool in the League Cup semis. Having already beaten Manchester United and Manchester City. It is, it's a pipe dream. It is a pipe dream. As Firmino comes in, Blackman's there. Sadio Mane, Blackman with a double save of dreams. And if he, if he performs, maybe we might. 
corner. Mo Salah to take it for Liverpool has played in. Firmino's there at the front post. And he gets his eighth goal of the season and brings the tie level out 1-1, 34 minutes in. It was a little too good to be true, the start. And Firmino beats Blackman at his front post. And, God, <laughs> oh, listen, this is, just, this is just for our own enjoyment. We're not expecting anything out of this, but... If we could just upset the odds again, that would be absolutely amazing. Two minutes to go before half time. There is another highlight, and it's. We oh, we are not on the attack anymore. It's going to be Liverpool on the counter. Or maybe it is. Sebastiano Esposito brings it down and goes for goal. Allison is equal to the challenge, though, and it remains at 1 1 with about 40 seconds left in the first half. Bruno Costa with a corner. Oh my god, Halmir almost puts us 2 1 up just before half time. Well, that is going to be that. Barnsley 1, Liverpool 1. Phenomenal performance from the boys already. Um, only 45 minutes in, but they have done exceptionally well. And there's no need for any changes. First highlight of the second half. It's Milik with a free kick for Liverpool. He goes for goal. Blackman's equal to the challenge. So he's not even bothered about that sort of strike. Mo Salah, another corner. We know the good from set pieces. And Van Dijk is the one who gets his head on it this time. They are really, really bobbing forward. Firmino at the back post from a Mo Salah corner. We, we survive once again, and can we counter? Esposito picks up the ball from Blackman's kick. He gets in behind the defence. What a challenge that was. Whoever that was, uh, who is that? Oh, it's Ruben Diaz. It was a great challenge, uh, last minute block. But there is a corner. Moat is going to be the one who takes it. It's played in. Comes out of Bruno Costa on the edge. Back to Moat. God, it's cleared. And Mo Salah, can he break for Liverpool? No, he can't. That's an absolutely awful touch for one of the best players in the world. 22 minutes remaining. Is there going to be some more drama in this game? Robertson coming down the left-hand side for Liverpool. Combining with Sadio Mane. John Williams with a hell of a challenge though. But we can't retain possession. Van Dijk spreads the plate to the right-hand side for Mo Salah. He's got the overlapping man but he's not going to need him. Tony Herrero. What a god he is. And Bruno Costa can drive forward for us now. He's got three in support if he can get past Ruben Diaz. He gets the ball in. Robertson clears only as far as I. And Van der hits the post. <laughs> Van der Heerde almost getting his second goal of the game. We will look to make some substitutes now because particularly Ian Van der Heerde is really, really struggling out there. We'll get Bichu on on the right-hand side. We can get Dimitri Cavaria as on as our right-back. And we'll bring on Corley Rodrow for Bruno Costa on the left-hand side. He has scored a good number of goals, cutting in as an inside forward from that side. So we'll see if he can do it again today with only 12 minutes remaining. Foster Kasky, don't give the ball away. He finds Alex Moat. We've got options on this right-hand side if we can uh, find the player. And there it is with Cavari. Lovely touch past uh, Andrew Robertson. And why he shot there, despite me telling him not to, uh, is beyond me. Free kick for Liverpool. Uh, Alexander-Arnold plays it down the right-hand side for Mo Salah. And Milik should probably be putting Liverpool 2-1 up there. I think it's safe to say. Uh, as you can see, Blackman's uh, average rating is absolutely brilliant for a goalkeeper in football manager. 7.4. It's basically a 10. Um, Esposito loses out to Naby Keita and we handle it well. Why isn't uh, Blackman picking that up? It was a header from Batella. Beecho though heads it down to Esposito. He's got a man at the back post if he wants him. It, it, <laughs> why? And that is going to be it for the first leg of the League Cup semi. Bur uh, Burnley. I'm not Burnley. Barnsley won. Liverpool won. An absolutely fantastic performance. The, the fact that we haven't got beat in <laughs> one of these games is absolutely unbelievable. Van der Heerde almost getting us uh, a little bit of an advantage going back to Anfield. Now, no need to get excited. We are away from home in the second leg. And chances are we are going to get absolutely smashed. But we can hold our head up high for our League Cup campaign. We have knocked out two of the best sides in the Premier League. We've taken Liverpool to a second leg. Fantastic stuff. Plenty of games in between. I'll update you as and when we play them. And if there is any transfer business, I will update you also. Another game against Crystal Palace, this time it was in the Championship, and another draw. Crystal Palace nil, Barnsley nil, a bit of a ball game. We can't afford to be doing this too much, dropping points here and there, but we do have a 14-point cushion before this game, so hopefully it won't come back to bite us. Well, 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 it turns out we may have some money for January. Watford have made a £10 million offer for Aidan Marsh. Now, you've probably never seen Aidan Marsh before, because I've never shown you him. He's a 17-year-old striker in our under-18s. He's got a bit of potential to grow. He's currently two stars. He looks like he's going to become a very good player. I've had scattered offers of like around a million pounds from various Premier League clubs, which I've been rejecting. 
Uh, so I decided to offer him over 10 million and our board, our chairman has stepped in and accepted the offer, which is absolutely fine by me. I am not going to protest the transfer. I am not going to renegotiate. Aidan Marsh, 10 million pounds. See you later, mate. That is going to give us some room to manoeuvre. We're going to ask to see if they can increase our percentage of transfer revenue and therefore they have. We will now receive 95% of it, so it should be £9.5 million, because I believe the offer is £10 million up front. No clauses, no, none of that tricky business. But, uh, Aidan Marsh, you are my golden goose. See you later, mate. <laughs> so I am now going to go out in the hunt for some players, but I've got to bear in mind that anyone I sign has pretty much got to be Premier League ready for next season. So it might end up being the case that we just bank that money for next season. Um, but if I can find someone, you're damn right I'm going to bid for them. So Crystal Palace finally get the better of us in the FA Cup third round replay. Corley Woodrow did put us in the late 15 minutes in, but Jordan Ayew got a goal in the 67th to take it to extra time. And then 95 minutes in, he got the winner eventually. Dimitri Kovaria getting sent off pretty late on as well. It didn't help matters. So we're out of the FA Cup third round. I'm hoping this isn't like sending our form on a really downward spiral. We haven't won for a number of games now. And um, I'm getting a little bit concerned. Back to winning ways against Huddersfield in the league. Dimitri Basoli in the 25th minute gave us the lead. Ian van der Heerde continues his return. He is slowly but surely getting back to where he was just before he got injured. And he gets himself a goal a day in the 52nd minute. And there we have it. Aidan Marsh leaves the club. He signs for Watford for £10 million. Absolutely unbelievable bit of business there. And that gives us now £10 million to spend ourselves. We're going to adjust that a little bit. £7.5 million with 70k per week in the wages. If we can find that player to spend a lot on, who's going to be in our starting eleven next season, we will take it. I'm still on the hunt. I've been thinking about potentially signing um, Cataldi, Danilo Cataldi from that series, currently transfer listed. He would come in and probably be our best central mid and our defensive best defensive mid. Is it someone I really want to spend the money on though? I'm a little bit undecided. As you can see, he's currently a three and a half, three and a half star player, leading Skybet Championship player. Probably a bit too rich for me at three million pounds for someone who's not necessarily going to be able to take the Premier League by storm. So I think I'm going to pass. Um his wage but his wage asking as well compared to the rest of our squad's pretty high. So I think I'm gonna pass, but I'm still on the I'm still on the hunt. We've just played QPR in an incredibly tough game. Uh, Queen's Park Rangers are currently sitting in fourth position. So playing them away from home was always going to be a struggle. But we managed to come away with the three points. Esposito with the goal in the 55th minute. And what was an even game. Um, but we got the three points and that's all that matters. So January is plodding on. We're not really looking at too many incomings just now. We've got our scouts out. Having a look at a couple of players to see if they could potentially be signings for us but it's looking unlikely right now but we've got our second leg against Liverpool in the League Cup semi-final a couple of changes to the standard starting 11 Albanos comes in at left back as Tony Herrero is suspended and what do you mean who's Albanos is that guy was signed last season for 575k who broke his leg for nine months he's back <laughs> so he can start the day uh, other than that Reese Nelson goes on the right hand side Bruno Costa comes in on the left and uh, Ian van der Heerde is currently suspended as well for today's game. So he can't start. That's absolutely fantastic. We'll kick off against Liverpool. Fully expecting to get trounced 6-0. But you never know. We drew 1-1 on the first leg. Maybe we could do it again. First highlight of the game comes 20 minutes in. It's Liverpool who are on the attack. And the ball is spread to Divock Origi on the left-hand side. Jordan Williams has just got him in his back pocket. That's all we like to see. Reese Nelson. Can he perform better on the right-hand side rather than the left? That's been the question of this season so far because he's been pretty dreadful Esposito was offside there so I wasn't even I didn't even get an inch of excitement I knew he was about three yards off anyway back to the game Robertson down the left hand side for Liverpool 20 minutes in whips the ball in Milik's there falls to Naby Keita in the box it hits the post and Blackman's got that covered so uh, why even worry Jordan Williams picks up an injury very very early on we'll get Dimitri Cavari on at right back that's one of the positions where we're pretty comfortable in terms of O2 options Regardless of which one starts, it's pretty much the exact same player. Liverpool on the attack again on the left-hand side. Naby Keita plays the ball in. Tisserand gets it clear. And can we break with Reese Nelson? He does have the pace. And we've got two-on-two -two situation. And Reese Nelson could have threaded that ball through for Esposito and led to the first goal of the game. 
but instead he goes for goal. And he's been absolutely crap. Like <laughs> Reese Nelson has been one of our worst signings this season, and I, I'm persistent with him because he is such a good player. But um, it wouldn't be a bad decision to actually drop him completely. Another highlight now: Alex Moat brings the ball forward for us and finds Albanos on this left hand side. His first start in about nine months, so I don't not expecting too much from the lad. Alex Moat goes for goal. Um, we're one nil up, forty minutes in. Against Liverpool. Alex Mort, seventh goal of the season. I'm not getting excited. It's pointless. It's fruitless. It's still Liverpool we're playing. But uh, Bruno Costa finds Mort on his left foot. He goes for goal. He hits it back post. Um, yeah, 1-0. 2-1 in aggregate. We'll keep it at that. And that is going to be that for the first half. Didn't get excited. Stop it. We're not making it to a League Cup final as a championship side. We've still got to beat Liverpool. Um... Maybe being on the counter is just the best thing for us next season, playing in the Premier League, because it seems to be working out pretty well. Naby Keita, though, drives forward for Liverpool, finds Firmino, and Reese Nelson nicks the ball. Oh, Esposito. We were aware there. We were. That was counter-attack opportunity of dreams, but it turns to Liverpool's favour. Blackman's equal to Firmino's challenge, though, and that's not even the highlight, apparently, according to the match engine. We give the ball straight back to Liverpool, and they are back on the attack. Ruben Diaz, lovely ball over the top for Gomez on the right-hand side. Plays it back to Mo Salah. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Naby Keita on the edge. Milik, ah, and there's the equaliser. Uh, I'm not pronouncing his first name. Milik's fifth goal of the season brings Liverpool back level on the night and on aggregate. We couldn't hold out much more than three minutes in the second half. Never mind. We might be able to surprise them a little bit more in the final 40 minutes of this game. But that is a fantastic finish and there's no chance for the keeper there. 55 minutes in now, we are on the attack on the right-hand side with a throw-in. Reese Nelson beats both of his men. He tries to get the byline, plays it back to Gonzalo Ramos, Esposito. It's cleared by the Liverpool defence, and that was the highlight, really. Another highlight now, we give the ball away in the midfield, and Everton can drive on for Liverpool. Goes for goal, Blackman with an easy save. And these highlights are really, really poor. With only 10 minutes or so remaining, we will look to make a change. Reese Nelson's proper struggling out there. So we'll get Bruno Costa on that right-hand side and take Reese Nelson off for Corley Woodrow on the left. Albanos can come off for Ben Williams, um, who's been our backup left back all season. So he deserves some game time. Get some glory here, son. Go and get the winning goal. Highlight. Dimitri Cavaria pinches the ball from um, Alisson's goal kick. And Batella tries to play it forward and we give the ball away. So it's Liverpool's opportunity. Or is it? Corley Woodrow pinches the ball. Tisserand plays it out to the left-hand side and... Pff, Poor, poor pass. And Harvey Elliott can come forward on the right-hand side for Liverpool. Whips the ball in. Falls to Chamberlain. Falls to Firmino. <laughs> Are we going to attack them to penalties? I would take that all day long. 93 minutes in. We'll go on to penalties. Our boys aren't the greatest penalty takers in the world. But um, you never know. They might be able to do the business on a surprise occasion. Corley Woodrow is going to be the first man who steps up for us. He doesn't beat Alisson. We've missed our first penalty. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic stuff. Milik steps up for Liverpool. He's the one who got the goal for the equaliser. And Blackman goes the right way, but he can't get his hands to it. And Liverpool take an early lead in the penalty shootout. Esposito will be the next one for us. He bangs his penalty home. He's not missing from there. Our boys celebrate in the background. I don't know why you're celebrating, lads. We're getting beat at the minute. Firmino steps up for Liverpool and scores. A penalty shootout is Liverpool 2 Barnsley won. Basoli is usually our penalty taker. He's the first to, third to step up for us. And he misses. Alisson saves. And that is going to be... I think that's going to be the tie now, lads. Unless Chamberlain misses this. He does. Blackman with a hell of a save. We're back to 2-1. Moat, you know what you need to do here, lad. You need to score. Otherwise, we're pretty much out. Moat steps up and he bangs it in. Blackman, come on, son. Come on, Jamal. Can you save... From an Everton penalty. You've got to be able to do it. Come on. Ugh. It's not to be. One more penalty. We need to score to stay in this. Who is going to be the fifth penalty taker for us? It's going to be Bruno Costa. So Bruno. He steps up after having a, the longest run up known to man. And he takes the penalty. And he keeps us in the game. Liverpool must score to knock us out. Otherwise we're continuing with this penalty shootout. Jamal Blackman. Can you save... Harvey, Harvey, Harvey Elliott's penalty. Can he be the hero that we need, that we deserve, and the one we need right now? 
Can he do it? Elliot steps up. No, he can't. <laughs> and there we have it. Liverpool would take them all the way to penalties, but it wasn't a B. We get knocked out in the League Cup semi-final. A great performance from the boys to be able to take them that far. Back-to-back 1-1 draws in both legs. We would have faced Chelsea in the final and played pretty much all of the elite of uh, the Premier League. But it wasn't to be on this occasion. Proud of the lads. We were only expected to what? Get to the fourth? No. Where are we? Third round. Getting to the semis is nothing to sneeze at. And we can be proud of ourselves for getting that far. In terms of the rest of the episode then, we've got Aston Villa still to play. Which we will show you the result of. And of course the January transfer window to wrap up. Only a few more days left in that. And unless someone comes out of the woodwork and becomes available, maybe transfer listed, it's unlikely that we are to make any moves. But we'll hold out hope with our £7.5 million. So we've just played our final game of the episode. It was a 3-0 home victory against Aston Villa. Reese Nelson, Esposito and Corley Woodrow with the goals today. Woodrow coming on on that left-hand side for Reese Nelson. After we just bad-mouthed him, he's just ended up getting himself a goal, which so I might start doing it more often. Um, anyway, looking at the championship table, let's have a look at it in this screen. So we are still 14 points clear despite the draw uh, against Crystal Palace earlier on in January. So we've managed to maintain our lead over West Ham. But West Brom have actually closed it. It's now 18 points to third position. It's still an absolutely massive gap with only 12 games of this season to go. So we should, we should be able to get ourselves guaranteed Premier League status pretty soon. There's still a few days left of the uh, transfer window, so we'll I'll quickly play through them, see if anything happens. Uh, it's unlikely, so if you want to click off now, most years day anyway. So uh, <laughs> I'll see you at the end. And the transfer window door slams shut. No further incomings or outgoings to speak of right now. Obviously, a little bit disappointing not to improve our first 11, but based on the sort of prices we need for the sort of players we will need for next season, it made no sense to start investing in January of this season. Just a little couple of tidbits here. We are still only 19th position in terms of wage expenditure in the Championship. So I'm hoping we get a huge increase for that in the Premier League. We're going to have to if we are to um, be able to compete in the Premier League. Aidan Marsh, I will only seal £10 million for this player. is a little bit stupid. And I'm not sure what, what, would, what Watford were thinking. But we will take it either way. And that is it for today's episode. So if you have enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like. In terms of the... I've already showed you the league table. In terms of next episode, what are we doing? West Ham. Yeah, West Ham Middlesbrough seems to be the only way to come back from. So we will do just that. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.